Hi, this is Buffy Hamilton, the Unquiet Librarian, and I wanted to share with you some challenges I'm encountering that uh, might be helpful to share with others as I'm doing some legwork in advance of the introduction of some new tools for content creation um, and reflection and information sharing that I'll be introducing with our students at Creepy High School uh, in the next actually couple of weeks and during the 2011-2012 academic year. The reason I wanted to take just a few minutes to demonstrate some of these challenges to you through the screencast. Um, one, um, some of you may be thinking about using similar tools with your high school or college uh, students. But secondly, as we think about trying to make databases more appealing to students and to encourage them to use these types of information sources, I'm a little concerned that as our students begin using some of these new tools for cross-posting content um, and then using those spaces to either curate that information or to reflect upon um, those information sources, I'm a little concerned that they might not be as likely to want to use some of the databases um, simply because they, at least at this point in time, don't lend themselves to being shared as easily as um, information sources that are outside of these walled gardens. And my hope is that by sharing uh, some of these challenges that um, our library community can perhaps come up with some solutions and hopefully any vendors that are out there who might be um, checking out this screencast can perhaps work with us as librarians and libraries to also mitigate some of these challenges and to make these information sources talk, if you will, um, a little more clearly <laughs> and nicely with these tools that we're introducing to our students to really help them learn how to become a network learner um, and tools that are going to become part of their uh, personal learning environments. So let's start with this first source I've got open. Um, this is from Academic Search Complete, which um, is actually one of my favorite databases and that we're very grateful to have access to through Galileo, Georgia's virtual library. And um, this article is on embedded librarianship and I've actually been using Scoop It since June to curate um, information on a couple of topics I'm very interested in, one of which is embedded librarianship. So if I wanted to cross post this to my Scoop It dashboard um, on this topic, uh, I could use the bookmark tool that's uh, built in to the database, which is Add This. And um, I do have to give props to EBSCO for not only giving just 10 choices here, but if we click on the More button, Pretty much any type of social media um, or uh, cloud computing type of tool that you could think of is on this menu. So I do appreciate the fact that there are a lot of choices. And if I just begin to type in Scoop It, then I can uh, go direct, directly to my dashboard that I'm already logged into. Now, with um, this form of cross posting, uh, typically, um, it defaults to the first dashboard that's on your list. It doesn't automatically pick up the keywords and select uh, the topic that you're curating. Uh, in this case, it did because I was in this just a little bit earlier. Um, so sometimes you may have to manually choose that. It's also not populating the title field or the description field. And while I certainly could go in and copy and paste um, you know, the title and maybe perhaps part of the abstract, uh, that seems to me to kind of defeat the entire point of using a tool like Scoop It. Um, you shouldn't have to manually enter that information. Um, I'm just going to go right now and keep it at the title. I'm not going to worry about adding anything from the abstract. Um, it doesn't pick up uh, any images, uh, which sometimes, obviously, there aren't images in the database articles. But if I go ahead and publish this to this dashboard, You'll see that this source or this scoop that I've just done looks pretty dull compared to the other information sources um, that I've been scooping into um, this information dashboard. You'll notice the others look a little more colorful. You know, have some graphics. That, you know, they pick these things up, and those all cross-posted pretty nicely. 
Now, just to show you how that compares to scooping something from, say, a website like ACRL, um, and I could use my Scoop It bookmarklet on my browser um, toolbar, but just to kind of keep apples to apples, I'm going to use my Add This uh, button. I'm going to go down to More, and I'm going to once again choose Scoop It. But you'll notice now, if you watch with uh, non-database information source, um, those websites tend to talk a little more clearly to tools like Scoop It, um, that it's picked up the correct topic, that it's picked up the title, there is no image for this, but it's also picked up the initial uh, sentences or a key, key sentence from that resource. And so if I publish it, then I can now one more time go to that dashboard and it's going to look um, a, li a little bit more appealing. And you'll notice now it's already picked that up. So that's one limitation. It's certainly not um, something that means you can't scoop. Um, it just means you have to do a little bit more work, um, which again kind of goes against the whole point of using a tool like this. So it would be nice if um, that bookmarklet tool within the database um, could maybe work uh, a little bit more cleanly uh, with an information dashboard like this. Um, just to show you to kind of what that might look like with a tool like Tumblr or Posterous if you're um, asking students to perhaps um, maybe cross post information sources and do brief reflections on those on a learning blog that uh, they might be creating in Tumblr or Posturus. Uh, again, it kind of, the, the results are kind of hit or miss as to how that cross post. So I'm going to cross post this to my Tumblr blog. And you can say Tumblr is not too bad. It does at least pick up the title. It does have the correct um, info mark or uh, permalink. Um, and then you know, if the student here wanted to go through and write a reflection, you know, add any additional information, um, then they certainly could do that. So it does interface a little more nicely with Tumblr. Um, unfortunately for us, at least for the time being, uh, Tumblr is blocked. Um, it was open, but it's blocked now um, because uh, of uh, some rules related to SIPA um, and uh, porn. <laughs> Uh, that uh, some of the, there was concern that Tumblr was hosting in, uh, pornographic sites and so the whole domain has been blocked for the time being. So we thought what might be another alternative. Um, certainly students could use WordPress. We've used that in the past. Um, the limitation of WordPress for cross-posting is that some of these services work great with WordPress.com which is what we typically use but others will only interface with the .org version of WordPress and so it's a little inconsistent as to what you can cross post. So we've been looking at Posturus um, maybe as an alternative and also as a tool where um, we might even create a class type of blog. But you'll notice that when you cross post to Posturus, um, this really actually I think is even worse than the way that it was cross posting to scoop it and that no titles picked up, um, you, know, you have this little blurb, um, that's not very descriptive and again you would have to manually go in and tweak that post. So um, that is a limitation that's a little bit concerning uh, to me. So that's a little bit of what just one side of the coin um, from Academic Search Complete. Um, another database that we have through Galileo, our virtual library that has good content, um, is Student Research Center. But you'll notice this database um, doesn't even have a bookmarklet button. That's not even a choice to, to go in um, and do that. So, um, you know, I could attempt to use my Scoop It bookmarklet. Um, but you know, then the, the dilemma that you run into is, is it actually going to pick up the true permalink? And with a lot of these tools, unless you can manually go in and adjust that URL, um, then the answer is no. And you can do that with a tool, uh, say like Evernote, um, which we've used in the past. But in this case, I don't 
think there's a way to go in it and tweak that or if it is it's not very intuitive so uh, no bookmarklet buttons even built in to this database um, which it would be nice if EBSCO would maybe rethink that and uh, add that as a choice uh, Britannica again another uh, reference tool that we have through Galileo um, again there's really no bookmarklet uh, buttons or tools built into this now there is an option share this article with your readers and it does provide uh, HTML code so you could embed this let's say in the Posterous or Tumblr um, you can't WordPress because you cannot embed code into a WordPress.com uh, blog post which again is another limitation of WordPress even though I, I do like it as a blogging platform um, but when we're wanting to really be able to embed a lot of different kinds of material Tumblr or Posturus is a little more flexible. Um, you know, we could do this, but again, it's a pretty stripped down kind of blurb. Um, so it would be nice maybe if there were, again, a little bit more options or to at least maybe pick up some of the graphics. Um, and if you just simply embed this, it's very plain. Uh, you don't get anything that looks too terribly snazzy or appealing. Um, another database that we have locally through our school district um, is the Facts on File video database, which I like a lot, as do our students. Um, but again, um, other than embed code, which is pretty awesome um, to do you know, if you want to put it on a wiki page for maybe a, as part of a learning portfolio, um, again, you're pretty limited um, with what you can do. And in testing this, again, with some of the um, bookmarklets, um, it hasn't really uh, quite worked properly. So, uh, yeah, I do understand there's the technical challenges of subscription-based content that's not available to the public, but it would be nice um, you know, if these things could be uh, cross-posted, again, just a little bit more easily. And just to kind of show you, you know, what this is looking like, if I try to scoop it, um, it doesn't really pick up even the title um, of that. Now, if I were to go in and let's say grab the embed code, I can grab that. Um, it does work pretty nicely. I've, I've seen it work nicely with wiki spaces. If we were to go and let's say try to put it with posturous just to manually, like I'm not even going to try and use my share or add this buttons that I have built into my browser. And we can see the results of this when we try to cross post it to that. So I'm just going to go in and throw it on here. And I'm going to create a new post by web. And it may take just a minute here to fully load. Sometimes with the screencast, it takes just a couple of extra seconds for things to move along. And here's my HTML button. You know, I can re-enable that. I could go in and put a title, but you can see here the video is not truly embedding. You know, so that's pretty vague and not very helpful. So again, you know, it would be nice if even sort of a faux <laughs> uh, screen, you know, a little snippet of the video um, could show up. So at least people could kind of see a, a little bit of a, a, at least an image to kind of get a, get to, to support the text of what that was going to be about. So. If facts on files listening, uh, we would love that. Um, Gale is where I'm really frustrated at this point in time. We use Gale databases uh, pretty heavily. Uh, some of them are provided through our district. Others we purchase locally, like uh, Global Issues and Contacts is a school-based purchase. Um, you do have a, a sharing tool here, but you'll notice that unlike the EBSCO database, um, I only have these choices, and there's no way to choose anything else. Uh, and some of these choices, quite frankly, you know, ask, um, furl, I don't know if anybody's even still using that. Um, <laughs> MySpace, yeah, um, that's a pretty uh, empty sort of social networking site now for our teens because they're all on Facebook. It, it's pretty limited, and while I appreciate, uh, you know, they could put it on Delicious or Facebook, um, you know, there's not really a lot here that, that we're using. So it would be nice if that menu could be expanded. What I really don't understand, though, is that across the Gale platforms, we can go to the GVRL, and I don't even have an option to bookmark anything. 
this bookmark is just getting the persistent link or info mark back to that specific article. Um, there is no sharing button and if I were to try to use any of my buttons like the scoop it or again my share this or add this it's not going to uh, properly capture the info mark. Um, but these work better when they're actually built into the database so um, that is a little bit puzzling that you know across these platforms there's not consistency. Then we go to opposing viewpoints which Gail has been working to make um, to be more similar to global issues and context. Um, and again, I have um, the ability here to share. Um, but you'll notice here, okay, I've got you know some pretty good choices, and I click on more, and I have all kinds of choices here. Um, again, I could go in, and this looks very similar to what we saw in EBSCO. So I'm a little bit puzzled why the sharing features are not consistent across the GAL databases. That's really confusing not only to students, but to teachers. And that's something um, that I know I personally have uh, in the past conveyed <laughs> to GAL and a little distressed that at least at this point in time, it doesn't seem that um, anything really has been done to address that that challenge. So. Now you will notice that if I try to scoop it, again it's not really picking up the exact document properly and I have to go in and manually tweak it. Um, so again I think you know there's obviously a little bit of work that needs to be done. You know, we could try to cross post it to say Tumblr, which again even though our students don't have they might want to use it, but it's not picking up the title of the article. And you know, when we're thinking about wanting to encourage students to use a balanced menu of information sources, um, you know, that that's kind of a hard sell to them when the scholarly resources don't cross post cleanly in an interesting, sort of user friendly kind of way. Um, like, you know, something like a Wikipedia article or a YouTube video or, you know, a, a website that they've evaluated carefully. Uh, imposterous, yeah, this is pretty much a disaster here. Which again, I, I don't want to put all of the, um, the blame, if you will, at the feet of the database vendors. Sometimes it's, it's the tool itself. Posterous seems to me to be the one that's the least friendly to cross post to, um, which is one of the reasons I would prefer to use Tumblr. But um, Posterous will do until we can maybe revisit the decision that was made to, to block that tool. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit of a challenge for us. So um, you can see oops, how that might be a little bit challenging to our users. Um, just very briefly, we run into that also with Evernote as well with these databases that um, sometimes it picks up the article, sometimes it doesn't. Um, SERS is another fabulous database. We are thrilled that funding for that has been restored um, to all schools in Georgia through Galileo, our virtual library. So um, we're very grateful for that. But again, when I go to share it, and we have the, the same add this button, it doesn't necessarily um, interface cleanly. So here's what it's going to look like in Tumblr, you know, search results, you know, what the heck is that? <laughs> Nobody knows. So instead, you know, you would expect it would pick up the actual title of the article and hopefully a little bit um, of the first few lines. And again, you're going to get the same results if you try to, let's say, um, let's try putting it in scoop it. Yeah, lots of choices on the menu, which I'm very appreciative of, but it just doesn't really cross post cleanly. So that's a little bit of a challenge. And again, if you compare that to just a traditional type of article, um, you know, here's one from uh, NPR. This will be a topic uh, some of our students will be researching a little bit later in the fall. The famine that is happening in Somalia then um, you'll note that again I could use my bookmarklet buttons here or if you have those built into the browser um, you know, wherever it's at to cross post the content. So, and again you'll notice now it's picking up the image, it's picking up the beginning of the text, it's picking up the title of the article. Obviously that's a lot more user friendly than what you just saw at the databases. Um, 
Now, the article itself, their own share button, yeah, that's pretty limited. In fact, more limited than what we saw in uh, one of the Gale databases. But um, if you can get these bookmarklet tools installed on your browser toolbars at school, then that can help mitigate um, that challenge. So um, I want to thank you for taking time to watch a screencast, which has been, uh, I know, a little bit longer than what I normally would do. But I wanted to share this with you um, so that if you're thinking about um, trying to help students learn how to share and distribute content and work together as communities of learners and cultivate these personal learning environments, that these are some of the challenges, at least for the time being, um, that you might encounter um, when you're trying to encourage them to use scholarly content from databases. And my hope is that we can keep the lines of communication open with our database vendors and find ways to make these tools talk to each other um, in a little bit more user-friendly manner so that um, students can see that if they cross-post you know, an NPR article off the web uh, and then they grab you know, maybe an article from a journal in one of those databases, they really should be able to look pretty similar, uh, I think, in order for uh, that to be appealing to students. So while certainly, you know, we don't want students choosing to use an article on the sole basis of, well, it works well with my curation or reflection tools. In another sense, that really is an important consideration if they're trying to create um, sort of a digital archive, if you will, uh, of, of you know, the information sources they're using. And if they're wanting to share those in a user-friendly way across their networks of um, students and their co-learners. So um, if you're out there using these tools and um, you have found some better ways to make these tools speak to each other, um, I'd love it if you um, would share your experiences um, by contacting me at buffy.hamilton at cherokee.k12.ga.us. So thank you for your time in the screencast, and I look forward to updating you in the next few months um, as uh, we share our journey of learning, uh, as we think about uh, using these tools for uh, curation and reflection. Thank you again.